Greetings and salutations, friends and gamers of all stripes. My name is GM Dave, I am your man behind the screen, and welcome back to Character Showcase. The last time we were here, we took a look at the tragic story of Kratos, the fallen god of war, and saw how those tragedies were largely caused by his own pride. In so doing, we also examined the different aspects of his characters that we could transfer into our own games and our own characters, to create engaging and interesting, tragedy-driven characters like him. Today, we turn the lens away from tragedy and towards zealotry, and to the man who stands at the center of the Fallout New Vegas DLC Honest Hearts, the burned man himself, Joshua Graham. Now, unlike our video with Kratos, where we condensed and examined his story across four of his seven games, Joshua Graham's story isn't going to need to be quite so compacted. He doesn't have seven games worth of content for us to explore. That being said, though, he does still have a pretty damn extensive backstory, and that backstory does play an important part into the man that he's presented as in the Honest Hearts DLC. Due to that fact, as well as an interest in providing more easily digestible shorter form content, we're not going to actually cover Joshua Graham's full backstory, personality, and the full analysis of what we can take from his character for our own games in a single video. Instead, we're going to separate this analysis into three videos beginning today with the exploration of his backstory, and following that up then with an exploration of his personality, drives, and motivations, and finally finish off with the character analysis wherein we will use some of the things we have looked at from Joshua's backstory, personality, and motivations and see how we can convert some of that into interesting characters in our own right, using Joshua Graham's story, much like Kratos's, as a starting point for us to see what elements we can use to create engaging, zealotry-driven characters that still have room to grow. So with all of that out of the way, let us waste no more time and progress into looking at the backstory of Joshua Graham. Now Joshua Graham is what is known as a New Canaanite, a tribe in the Fallout universe that was formed from the remains of the Mormon Church, and as such he appropriately began his life in Utah. Specifically he was born in the settlement of Ogden, and through his youth he was trained to become a Mormon missionary. Yes, the New Canaanites were still very much devout Mormons, and as such they held their god and indeed the entirety of their faith in great reverence, and Joshua was no exception. In the year 2246, he left Ogden to begin his missionary work. However, a year later, in 2247, far south of Utah along the Grand Canyon, Joshua Graham would have an encounter with two men that would forever change his life. These two men were members of the Followers of the Apocalypse, a band of doctors and scholars who sought to aid the Wasteland as a whole, bringing their knowledge whenever and wherever they could. Indeed, the Followers of the Apocalypse actually have ties to some of the earliest Fallout games, with the first game providing some very early glimpses of the seeds of their foundation. These two particular Followers of the Apocalypse were men by the name of Bill Calhoun and Edward Sallow both of whom had been dispatched to that area to study the tribal dialects that had begun to emerge in the post-apocalyptic wasteland. Because of this, Joshua, who was already fluent in many of these dialects as a new Canaanite and missionary, decided that he would assist these men. Some short time later, the group visited a tribe called the Blackfoots, and once again, fate's wheels began to turn for Joshua Graham. Whether he had been tricked by the Blackfoots or he had screwed up in his translation of their language wasn't entirely clear. However, it very quickly became apparent that the Blackfoots were not going to allow these three men to leave. During their time as the captives of the Blackfoots, the followers of the Apocalypse learned that the tribe was actually locked in constant warfare with seven other tribes in the region as well, and they were losing. When he discovered this, Edward Sallow decided that he was not going to simply roll back and die there with these ignorant tribesmen. As such, in spite of the protests of his fellow follower Bill Calhoun, Edward Sallow decided that he would teach the Blackfoots the art of warfare, being the well-read and knowledgeable man that he was. 
and bring them the knowledge they needed to survive. By teaching the Blackfoot skills such as the maintenance of firearms and small unit tactics, among other things, Edward Sallow was able to reshape them into a pretty decent fighting force, although their dwindling numbers still meant that they were no match for the other seven tribes in the region. However, they would be a match for the weakest tribe in the region with their now superior tactics and superior armaments. Thus, Edward Sallow began his campaign of dividing and conquering the seven other tribes, leading the Blackfoots to many victories. Because of this, the Blackfoot soon named Sallow their leader, and he took on the name of Caesar. Thus began Caesar's Legion. During all of this, Joshua Graham remained at Caesar's side as a translator, but over time, translating soon became the giving of orders, which then eventually became leading the men into battle himself. Before long, he found himself placed at Caesar's side as his chief general, the first legate of Caesar's Legion. Bill Calhoun, on the other hand, wanted no part of Edward Sallow's conquest campaign, and so he returned to the followers of the Apocalypse to inform them of what their former brother had done. Over the next three decades, Joshua Graham served Caesar's Legion as its legate, leading the Legion to many victories. However, Graham was not actually a particularly talented battlefield commander. He didn't have the wealth of knowledge of military strategy and military history at his fingertips that the very well-read Caesar did. Instead, it was the menacing brutality with which he fought that inspired his men to victory. Indeed, the atrocities that he committed on the battlefield were said to be feared both by foe and friend alike. This savage brutality, combined with his dangerous unpredictability and growing legends of him supposedly being unkillable even by some of the Legion's most dangerous foes, such as the highly trained rangers of the New California Republic. By the way, it is actually noted that Joshua Graham's death at the hands of the NCR's talented first recon sharpshooters had been reported no less than five different times helped to lead Graham to victory after victory, even in spite of his own shortcomings as a battlefield commander. However, this streak of victories would soon reach its end, and soon the legend of Joshua Graham would take an even darker turn. You see, over the 30 years that Caesar's Legion had been expanding, widening its borders and forcefully integrating no less than 80 tribes under its banner, they had yet to encounter a resistance like that of the new California Republic's well-trained army, nor had they encountered a monument or, in the case of Caesar, a settlement more thoroughly desired than Hoover Dam and New Vegas both of which were currently occupied by the also expansive New California Republic. Now, in the case of the NCR, the desire to hold Hoover Dam was purely pragmatic. Their scientists discovered that even 200 years after the world had ended in 2077, when the bombs dropped, not only could Hoover Dam still be made to function, but it actually had the potential to generate enough power to provide energy to the whole of the New California Republic thus making it a highly valued target and commodity for them. For the Legion, however, Hoover Dam was a strategic point to be held, a gateway that led to the city of New Vegas, the city that Caesar wanted to make his Rome. And for Joshua Graham, that meant Hoover Dam was an objective to be taken. And so, in the year 2277, 200 years after the war that ended the world, under Caesar's orders and Joshua Graham's leadership, the first battle of Hoover Dam began. The battle went well for the Legion at first, with Joshua Graham and his men successfully routing the NCR soldiers into a strategic retreat. Unfortunately for Graham, his inflexibility as a battlefield commander, along with his lack of knowledge of battlefield tactics, would end up costing him severely this day. For as the NCR retreated into the nearby settlement of Boulder City, the Legion followed them. Followed them straight into a trap. You see, Graham had no idea that the NCR had booby-trapped Boulder City with explosives, and given that the Legion is horrible at long-range combat, an area where the NCR actively excels, they had no choice but to pursue the fleeing soldiers into the city. But when this happened, the bombs were set off, and Joshua Graham's entire force was all but wiped out. For this stunning failure, and to set an example to all in his legion that rank did not matter when it came to failure, Caesar, 
the man who was supposed to be Joshua Graham's friend had him covered in pitch, set on fire, and thrown into the Grand Canyon. However, the legend of the unkillable legate seemed to live on, because Joshua Graham survived. Burned and wounded, he still managed to climb his way out of the canyon and, in time, return to the new Canaanites, who, to his great surprise, still accepted him as though he never left, even in the face of the atrocities he committed. However, whether it was due to spies or simply suspicion, it appeared that Caesar knew Joshua lived, and he sent assassins after him. Those assassins ended up wiping out a majority of the new Canaanites, the remainder fleeing to other parts of Utah. However, these initial assassins, along with many more of Caesar's frumentari, which were his band of assassins, continually failed in their missions to kill the seemingly unkillable burned man. Soon after, Graham, along with one other of the new Canaanites, the preacher Daniel, made their way to Zion Canyon, a place holy to members of the Mormon faith. While heading there, they encountered two tribes, the Dead Horses and the Sorrows, who were being accosted by a third, brutally savage raider tribe known as the White Legs. The Dead Horses, being trained in warfare, stood a better chance of standing up to the brutal White Legs than the Sorrows did, who were widely just farmers and hunters, and knew very little of the ways of warfare with other men. As such, Daniel and Joshua wanted to protect the Sorrows, Joshua wanting to protect them by teaching them how to fight, Daniel wanted to protect them by keeping them safe and preserving their innocence, as it were. However, Joshua's insistence that the Sorrows learn to fight to protect themselves against the White Legs, as well as a growing desire to see the White Legs wiped out, only grew fiercer when he learned that the White Legs had petitioned Caesar to join the Legion, and that they had been sent to Zion Canyon with a mission. To join the Legion, they must wipe out the new Canaanites and anyone who stands with them. And thus, Joshua Graham prepared for war and petitioned the help of you, the player character, the Courier, whose first steps into Zion alongside the Happy Trails caravan which they had decided to work for were met with a white leg assault that resulted in the entire caravan being wiped out with you being the sole survivor. And thus we reach the end of our look at the history of Joshua Graham and the end of today's video. When I next return with Character Showcase, we will look at the kind of man Joshua Graham is, from his personality and motivations to his beliefs, faith, and convictions. And in that time, we will begin to see that not only is Joshua Graham a zealot and a dangerous man, but he is also a man that does have the potential to change and grow, an aspect of his character that we will examine next time. In the meantime, friends and fellow gamers, as always, I hope you enjoyed this content I made for you today. If you did, please consider leaving a like and sharing it around to your friends, and if you'd like to see more, please hit that subscribe button and the bell notification icon. However, for more consistent notifications, I do highly recommend following me at social media from the links in the description box down below. While you're down there, if you like my work and you'd like to support me financially, you can also find a link to my Patreon page where you can do just that. Any donation, no matter how small, is thoroughly appreciated. And while I'm on the subject, I want to give a little shout out to my current first and only patron, Adeptus Azul. Thank you so much for your patronage, man. It really does mean the world to me. And with all that now out of the way, friends and gamers of all stripes, I invite you to join me next time to continue our exploration of the character of Joshua Graham. And as always, it is my sincere hope that you continue to roll high, roleplay well, and game on.